Hey guys, John Rettinger here with an unboxing for you of the Samsung Propel Pro. This is a QWERTY non-touchscreen Windows Mobile 6.1 standard device that was just released today, which is April 14th for AT&T Wireless, and it'll run you $149 after a $50 mail-in rebate and of course, a two-year contract. So let's go ahead and dig into the box here and get to the fun stuff got the back to open it up with all right slice on into that here is the box itself Samsung Propel Pro let's take a look around it and see what we got this also is being called the Blackjack Slider. It looks very similar to the Blackjack 1 and 2, both made by Samsung, except those weren't sliders, those were full candy bar devices. So it's got Wi-Fi, GPS, email, and a camera, obviously, and since it's running Windows Mobile 6.1 standard, it is a full smartphone, meaning you get a full suite of applications, including Word, Excel, PowerPoint. You can edit all those documents. You also have a full email client you hook up to Microsoft Exchange server has a built-in GPS for figuring out wherever you want to go that'll hook into AT&T's Telenav service or with Google Maps. This is a pretty standard box here same business on the side on the back here are some specs let's go over some of the key stuff here so Windows Mobile 6.1 standard non touchscreen Wi-Fi supporting B and G it is a 3G phone she has a pretty beefy processor, 528 megahertz. It is 3.9 times 2.4 times 0.6 inches, so that's kind of the diameter and the thickness of the device. It has 256 megabytes of ROM, 128 megabytes of RAM. Display is actually a very unique display, a 320 by 320. It's the first Windows Mobile standard phone that has that, meaning it's actually a lot longer. So reading email should be a lot easier. We'll take a look at the screen in just a moment. Weighs about 4.83 ounces, got a 3 megapixel camera, external micro SD card, hold up to 16 gigabytes of space, slide out QWERTY board, and the rest of that good stuff. Alright, so enough of that, let's see what the phone looks like. I'm actually pretty excited about this. I used to use an original Blackjack way before the iPhone even came out, so I have some experience with Windows Mobile 6, or rather Windows Mobile. Go ahead and open this thing up. Welcome to AT&T. All pretty standard fare. Getting started, CD includes user manual, active sync, and Windows Mobile Device Center and warranty stuff. I don't know how many of you guys actually use this, but uh, I doubt they ever get opened. Speaking of never getting opened, getting started guide. Part of the fun of getting a new phone is figuring out how to use it on your own. So we've got a battery, and Samsung is pretty well known for including really beefy batteries. Let's see what the milliamp hour battery on life on this is. 1440 milliamp hour. This is a big battery. You'll have no problem getting through a full day of normal use with this. It's actually not as thick as their other 1400 milliamp hour batteries that they included with phones like the Epics in the past. So that's good to see. Here is the phone. Put that aside for just a second. We've got Samsung's not awesome proprietary connector. I'll show you guys what that looks like. Samsung always does this. We need to send them some sort of note to use micro or mini USB, use some sort of standard instead of this proprietary port. But there it is, and if you use Samsung devices in the past, then you won't mind it. And just a standard wall charger with that same port. So let's look at the fun stuff. Here is the phone. Comes in a plastic bag. Slide it out does not want to be slid it's unslidable <laughs> alright so here is the phone it actually does have a little bit of heft to it but that's mostly due to the slide out QWERTY keyboard let's take a look around the device and see what we have so here's your 320 by 320 display you've got two soft keys right there you've got a send key you've got a home button which I'm assuming all these light up you've got a back button and an end key you've got a select button in the middle and you've got a four-way navigation around it so five-way navigation in total on the left side of the device we have a volume up and down a power 
and there is your micro USB port. It's nice that they included that on the outside of the device. You don't have to take out the battery to access that. On the right side, we don't have much other than the camera button and the charging and earphone port. This does not have a 3.5 or 2.0 or, 2 or any sort of headphone jack, unfortunately. You have to use Samsung's proprietary port to plug in headphones, which is quite unfortunate. Again, I wish Samsung would use some sort of standard for that. But enough about that. Let's take a look at the keyboard here and do a first impression feel. Keyboard on this does actually feel very nice. It has a very similar feel to the BlackBerry Bold. The keys on the side are sort of beveled. And actually, they are relatively flush. But because of the beveling on the side, they do feel like they're raised. And they definitely have a nice clickiness feel to them. And it's just as clicky on the outside as it is in the middle. And obviously, your number arrays are right there with a two-tone color. So let's go ahead and power this thing on. Let's peel off the protective film. This thing is definitely a shiny chrome. It looks to be a fingerprint magnet. In fact, it's so shiny, it looks like you can use the back right there as a mirror. You guys can see me. It looks like a funhouse mirror. You can sort of see me. Hello there. Alright, so let's power this thing on. Take off the film. Alright. So you can get that whooshing noise that comes from this. No whooshing noise. Sorry guys. Welcome. Start using your phone. Please see the getting started guide. We're not going to do that. So I am going to pop in a SIM card and put in the battery. Actually, let's take a look at the back and I will do that for you guys live on camera. So go ahead and open that up. See how the back of this comes off. There's a little latch. Push that in. Lift off the back of the battery. There we go. Battery is off. You can see the back of the device. Really only room for a SIM card and the battery. So we'll go ahead and pop in the SIM card. Done and done, and we will see if this battery has a charge. Usually they come with a partial charge on it. Put the back back on. And we'll power this guy on, and we'll also do a size comparison. And before I power this on, I definitely should say that the front of it, you can see an outline of where the screen is, but it actually looks almost like a mirror finish. So you can see sort of a reflection on there. You can see my finger. So you can almost use this as a, the front of this as a mirror if you wanted to as well. So we saw the power buttons on the side, let's go ahead and turn it on, and we'll see what we get. Cool, Samsung branding. I've actually came away relatively impressed with Windows Mobile 6.1 when I used it in the past. Um, I wasn't a fan of 6.0 or 5.0, but 6.1 standard at least uses those sliding panels. It makes navigation a little bit easier. You get that ridiculously loud. 3G logo from AT&T, your Windows Mobile load up screen, and that 320 by 320 screen definitely looks very nice. It looks much longer than most typical non-touchscreen phones. So it's connecting to 3G, and there we are. So let's see what we get on the default home screen here. Let's see how navigation is. The phone just turned itself off. There it goes. Okay, so you've got this navigation toggle and you've got your sliding panel interface. I did a full demo, by the way, of 6.1 standard versus the iPhone. In case you guys are interested, you can go back and check that out. But it's definitely your standard 6.1 interface with the sliding panels, which I actually am a fan of. Really easy navigation to see what you have. So let's do a required size comparison here. And I've got my standard cache of phones. We've got the iPhone. Zoom back out a little bit so you guys can get some sense of perspective. Stack them on top of each other. Just about the same width across. However, thickness-wise is another story altogether. But of course, the Propel Pro has something the iPhone doesn't, a full QWERTY board. So there's a size comparison with the iPhone. Let's bring in another Samsung device. This one is a touchscreen. This is the Samsung Epix. You can see size-wise, there's really a difference there. This is 
short and fat. This is tall and skinny. And the thickness comparison is actually not that much difference thickness. And this again still has a slide out QWERTY board, which I actually prefer the slide out. I'm not going to accidentally dial anybody's numbers with it slide slid in. So I, I really like that. It's a nice way to lock the device and answer phones without having to push any buttons. But then again, I still like flip phones. <laughs> I know I'm in the minority there. Here is the HTC Fuse for AT&T. This one has slide out keyboard as well. It's a touchscreen phone. Thickness wise, it looks to be just about the same. Size wise, the Propel Pro is just a little bit thicker, but not by much. Now I should say, well, I said the Propel Pro is on the thicker side, and it definitely is, but it's certainly pocketable. You can put it in your pocket and really not notice it. And I think it's a little bit thicker because of that 1400 milliamp hour battery, which I am more than willing to deal with to have a phone that'll last me all day. And the next one I'll compare it with here is the Sprint, or not the Sprint rather, the Trio Pro, which is actually only available for Sprint right now. This is an unlocked version. Size comparison, is your thickness, and on top of each other. So like most phones, I'll use this for a little while and I'll give you guys a full review. Although on initial inspection, build quality seems to be very good. And the spring-loaded sliding mechanism definitely pops up relatively quickly, which is nice. It's got a very easy feel to it. Well, this is certainly going to be a fingerprint magnet, as you can already see. So anyway, guys, this is John Rettinger with an unboxing for you of the Samsung Propel Pro. Be sure to stick around for a review coming up. And for exclusive content, be sure to follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash John4Lakers. See you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.